I'm almost certain there are some of you watching right now in certain situations you can't see your way out of. And the prophet said, what can I do for you? However, the thing I can do for you is within your proximity. There is a gift you have that you're neglecting that is actually the key to breaking out of this level that you're in now. So many of us don't realize that the majority of miracles God wants to do, he doesn't want to do for us. He wants to do with us and through us. What I want to share with you today is called simply, do not neglect the gift. I know you watching me right now, uh, uh, behind those two eyes uh, and those uh, that seeming ordinary look is an extraordinary gift on the inside of you. I've been studying the Hebrew calendar, and this is our Rosh Hashanah season, and it says, uh, 5784, the year of the open door. Many of the prophets around the world are decreeing that this is our time to see open doors. And I was looking at uh, particularly Proverbs 18, verse 16, and it says, a man's gift opens doors for him or her and brings them in front of important people. Another translation puts it like this. I believe it's the NLT. It says, a gift given opens doors. And I know watching me, there are people who are in frustration, wondering when certain promises might come to pass in their life, not knowing that the promise they're waiting for is waiting for them to release the gift. 1 Timothy 4 verse 14 is my scripture that I want to go from today. He says, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands, of the leadership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Um, There is a form of trauma called A trauma and B trauma, I found out. A trauma is the trauma of abuse. It's the things that happen to us. B trauma is apparently the worst trauma. It's the trauma of neglect, negligence, forgetfulness, uh, just not caring about those things. It's interesting that you can have a life-changing gift on the inside of you. You could have a world-changing gift on the inside of you and so uh, undermine it and so forget about it that the Bible actually says it's possible to even neglect altogether. That means it's possible to live and die and, and never, ever know or discover the gift that is on the inside of you, the gift that you are called to bring to this world. Each one of you is a gift. And it was so interesting to me when I read this that it's possible to be negligent of our of our uh, areas of gifting. And I want to uh, give you some solutions in a moment. But I want to talk to you about a story of a woman in 2 Kings 4 verse 2. And by the way, a lot of my readings are from the NKJV if you wanted to track with me. I want to speak to you about this woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2. It says, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditors coming to take my two sons to be slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Uh, Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your son, then pour it into into all the vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Please hear this story. It's so powerful because the prophet came to this woman and said to her, she's in a dire situation. And I'm almost certain there are some of you watching right now in certain situations you can't see your way out of. And the prophet said, what can I do for you? However, the thing I can do for you is within your proximity. There is a gift you have that you're neglecting that is actually the key to breaking out of this level that you're in now. 
So many of us don't realize that the majority of miracles God wants to do, he doesn't want to do for us. He wants to do with us and through us. Something she had was going to release something that she always wanted. Something in her proximity was going was supposed to be the solution and the answer to her predicament. But please hear what she called her gift. He said, what do you have in your house? Your house is a symbol of your body, the temple of the Holy Ghost. And he said, what do you have in your house? What do you have in yourself? What is the gift in you? And she said, nothing, just a pot of oil. The oil is symbolic of God's ability, God's anointing in our life. Whatever God has anointed you to do is the oil in your life. And she called her oil, her ability, nothing. Your servant has nothing, just a pot of oil. There are basic reasons why we feel that our gift is nothing. Number one, comparison. We're constantly comparing our gift to somebody else's who has maybe had more years on us, more experience on us. Another one is perfectionism. We just need to get it perfect. It just needs to be right before we release it. Her one was underestimation, which is the third reason. We sometimes, the Bible says, God has placed this treasure in earthen vessels. And because we are looking at ourselves and our physical form, it's so easy to underestimate the value of what we carry and what we have. And sometimes if you underestimate the value, somebody else will estimate it and you'll find yourself being involved in sort of a slavery. Some of you are in jobs you don't love or you don't like because you've underestimated what you value and somebody's valued what you have and now they, they sort of keep you in a place that maybe you don't even want to be because you've underestimated the value and the quality. I want you to see what happened here. The prophet said, go and borrow vessels, empty vessels. What's he saying? You have a solution, there's a need. There are people in this world who need what you have. There are people who are empty of what you have. Go and find the demand. You're not called to everybody. You're called to somebody. You're called to a group of people. Jesus knew he was called to the lost house of Israel. Paul knew he was called to the Gentiles. You are not called to everyone. There is a specific group of people that you're called to. He said, go and find vessels. Go and find empty vessels. Go and find the thing. Go and find the places that need what you carry. I hope you're tracking with me today. So she went uh, and found them. Then she shut the door behind her. Some Some of this development that God wants to do in your life is going to have to be private. It's going to have to be behind the scenes. Not all of it can be seen by everybody. Not all of it can be public. A lot of your development is going to be private. But please notice what happened. As she poured her gift, it didn't cease to flow. As she poured the oil, that which she underestimated became of high value. It didn't cease to flow. But the tragic thing here is she's now surprised by the fact that the oil hasn't ceased. So she says to her son, give me another vessel. He says, there's no more. The prophet didn't tell her how much to borrow. You know something about God. He's awesome and he's unlimited but he has limited himself to your faith. He has limited himself to your expectation. That means God may want to do tremendous things in your life. However, if your expectation is only so big, this is what God will do. He said to Abraham, uh, to Moses, I am who I am. I'll be who I'll be. What's your expectation of me? As much as she borrowed was what she got. And the Bible says the oil ceased to flow. God didn't tell her how much to borrow. God will not tell you where to set your expectation. He'll just say, count the stars. As many as you can see, you can have. Uh, You've got to dream bigger than you're dreaming for your life. So what's the solution and what's the answer? I believe the answer comes to us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, uh, Some of us are waiting for God to get us excited about our gifts. Some of us are waiting to feel like it. But the Bible says this uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. You and I have a responsibility to be excited about the gift of God in our life. You and I have a responsibility to stir it up and not wait for ourselves to feel a certain way. You and I have a responsibility to take inventory and stock of the giftings of God that is within us and start stirring up those giftings again and releasing them. 
I believe the anointing of God on each one of our lives operates on a use it or lose it basis. And you and I have got to be in a position where we release, utilize the gift of God that's in our life as often as we possibly can.